Let's welcome in the powerhouse panel, get some reaction to everything that's taken place this week as we head into the weekend. Joining Allison and myself is Project 21 National Advisory Board member and radio host Christopher Arps and best-selling author and political analyst Mark Halperin. Uh, panel, good morning to you both. Great morning. to have you all on. Happy Friday once again. Happy Friday. A um, lot to get to this morning, a lot happening this week. It's been another busy week. Uh, you just heard the breaking news taking place in Ukraine. We'll get to that in a little bit. We've got Sarah Williamson coming up at the top of the hour. Nancy Pelosi apparently has COVID-19, Allison. I know that mm -hmm. you've wanted to talk about this. She had plans to travel to Taiwan, I believe, on Sunday. Mark, was that the original plan for the Speaker of the House? She was going to go to both Tokyo and to um, and to Taiwan, be the first speaker since Newt Gingrich to visit that island. It was going to be symbolic, and the Chinese were railing against it. And so this happenstance means the visit's off, but they say it will be rescheduled. Okay, so it'll be rescheduled. Uh, and I'm curious why they would send Nancy Pelosi mm -hmm. uh, instead of maybe Lloyd Austin or maybe the Secretary of State. But, Allison, um, a lot's been made of some of the, the close contact right. that Nancy Pelosi has had with, with several people, including Joe Biden and Barack Obama. Um, wh what do you make of that? Yeah, so I think you and I kind of disagree a little yeah. on this. I mean, look, so the close contact that everybody's talking about is she gave President Biden a kiss on the cheek. Um, Jen Psaki was asked about that yesterday, and she said, well, according to CDC, you have to be you know, six feet apart, and you have to be within 15 minutes. And so, it, again... She's kissing him, right? I mean, the this thing is that, at the Barack Obama event at the White at House a couple days ago when they marked the, the big 12th year anniversary yeah, I mean, for the Affordable Care Act, look, Obamacare. I, I'm all for not wearing masks. I'm all for, you know, living your life. But the problem that I see is that, again, if this was a Republican, I think that the media would be going crazy over this, saying, you know, we're, 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 this is horrible. We shouldn't be doing this. Even though there's a vaccine, she's been vaccinated, she's been boosted. But right. again, it's just. And it, Joe Biden's been boosted twice. He's had four he, shots. Right. The guy's 80 years old. They tested him every day. My thought is, and I disagree, I think if he gets COVID, they test him, we find out. Um, I think there's a bigger problem here, uh, Chris, and I'm wondering what you think. Mm -hmm. We keep announcing when people test positive for coronavirus. It, it, at this point, we don't announce when somebody's got the flu. We don't announce when somebody is stung by a bee. Now, COVID is deadly. It's terrible. We've been dealing it for more than two years now. We've got boosters. We've got vaccines. Um, she's got COVID, you know, she's, we, we think she's in, in good health outside of being over 80 years old. She'll get over it. Uh, but should we really be broadcasting every time somebody tests positive with COVID-19? And when does it stop? Well, I can see us, uh, broadcasting that because I think what this shows is that these vaccines worked. I mean, we've get, we're getting people that are getting COVID for the first and second time, and they're not getting serious uh, health issues where they have to go to the hospital and on ventilators and things like that. So I think they should, we should be publicizing that to show that the vaccines work. Regarding the trip to, uh, to uh, Taiwan for Nancy Pelosi, in another lifetime, Rob, I was a staffer for United States Senator. And what that trip sounds like to me is a CODEL or a congressional delegation trip. Next week is the congressional recess. And so I think Nancy was taking a vacation to Taiwan and uh, Tokyo and trying to disguise it as uh, working on foreign policy. So good point, Mark. <laughs> um, so, Chris, I agree with the first half of everything you said there. Um, if, if Jen Psaki had said that in the briefing room yesterday, I would have been all for it. If she said, look, we've got vaccines. We, we wish uh, the speaker the best. Um, interesting point. By the way, you know that the House and Senate take two weeks off for Easter. So next Sunday, a week from Sunday is Easter. So they take a full two weeks off. I they wish get I, a lot of time off. Two weeks off for <laughs> Easter? Get My goodness. Uh, Mark, take a listen to the way that Jen Psaki positioned this yesterday. The way a close contact is defined, it's not arbitrary. It's not something made up by the White House. It's CDC guidelines. And how they define it is being within six feet for a cumulative total of 15 minutes over a 24-hour period that they were not. How can you guys say that President Biden was not a close contact with Speaker <clears throat> Pelosi when there is video of the speaker kissing him? Well, Peter, the way that it is defined is by the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, and their definition of it is 15 minutes. Mark Alpern, is, is kissing close contact? Would you, would you put that in the close <laughs> contact category? I feel like it is, and I think it's incredible that the White House is, is going, saying that 15 minutes is kind of a hard and fast rule. On the right. other hand, I think this is kind of a watershed moment. Blue America has caught up to red America mm. in saying that what this should be about now is personal responsibility. If you think of something's too risky, wear a mask if you want to. Don't show up in an event. But most of society thinks now we need to go back to a version of normal where we have events like they had at the White House. Like right. They're having baseball stadiums across the country. So... 
I think that's a that's a good indication. But I, I don't get the notion that that 15 minutes is some hard and fast rule because it just isn't. Yeah, I, I agree. It's like six feet apart. Uh, it's it's six yeah. feet apart, and the CDC eventually revised that to three feet apart. Well, which is qu- hold on, Mark. Just I'm sorry, Allison. Yeah. Um, I know you got a question, but Allison, uh, Mark, there was this this Gridiron Club dinner. I think it was last Saturday night in Washington. Mm-hmm. But this seems like this was like the big super spreader event. Any? Are you hearing anything about that? Well, Washington, you know, has a has the capacity to be pretty self obsessed, and lots of people, not just the speaker, lots of members of Congress. One of your favorites, Adam Schiff have gotten COVID, right. many of whom were at that dinner. Um, it is still possible to have super spreader events, even if people are requiring vaccinations or tests, that, that can still happen. But the key is, as you said, is as long as people aren't getting terribly sick, you know, we used to have super spreader events where people would get the colds or flus. Um, I call that my son's uh, preschool. Yeah. Uh, where, yeah. you know, that, that used to happen. It's happening again now in some places as masks come up. But I just think I just think people are, are adapted to this. Now we have to be worried if there's a new strain and there are some indications there might be that are not just more infectious but also more dangerous. I, I don't that, know if I like the word possible. worried about a new strain because we're going to have a lot of new strains. We'll have new strains well, from here if on there out. Are new strains that are if there are new strains that are not just more infectious but more dangerous, then we might have to adjust again. But for now, again, I think it's a great sign that Blue America has finally figured out that putting this on individuals and families to make decisions is a lot a lot smarter. Allison, you agree? Has Blue America, have they caught up fully? Sorry, I Chris. No, I, I, I think they are, they're getting there. But I think the White House, they get confused on what the CDC says, <clears throat> right? So Kamala Harris was exposed to somebody. So she's vaccinated, but she was exposed to somebody who had COVID. But then yesterday, or the other day, she didn't wear a mask in the Senate chamber um, while she was providing, a, she was presiding over Jackson, the Jackson vote. So Jen Psaki said, well, she was there by herself alone. She wasn't near people. Um, but the CDC says if you've been exposed to somebody who has COVID and you've been vaccinated, you're, you should be wearing a mask. So again, if the White House is going to yeah. say these things, they need to get their, their topics and their talking points well, in it's check. Gonna be, it's it's going to be super interesting today because there's a huge ceremony at the White House for yeah. the new justice. Outside, and, uh, though. It's outside. It's, out, it's outside, but I bet you there are going to be more masks than there would have been a yeah. week ago. So I think so. Just for uh, and, the virtue signal, I think we will. And I feel like we're going in yeah. circles at this point. But just back to Nancy Pelosi and that, that visit to Tokyo and Taiwan that now will be rescheduled. Um, again, I think Lloyd Austin or Antony Blinken would have been my first choice if I were the commander in chief, given what's going on in Ukraine or Kamala Harris. But because Kamala Harris is so darn unlikable with that 28 percent approval rating, according to Quinnipiac, maybe that's why the vice president's not being chosen to go on this trip. Rob, I, I couldn't disagree more respectfully. Please. You know, they did send a delegation, uh, not at the high level you're talking about, very early in the in the conflict with Ukraine. I thought it was a very bold and aggressive move by the administration to send a delegation of diplomats. And and you got to be careful, I think, in that part of the world to find the balance between sending a message to the Chinese without being super provocative. And I think sending the Speaker of the House is actually pretty high level and, and tips more towards the provocative. So I would agree with you, Mark, only I think that Nancy Pelosi is an aging, outgoing speaker, likely an outgoing speaker in seven months. Asia, Asia loves aging. They respect that. Chris? <laughs> I was just going to say, I think the Democrats' sorry electoral prospects in November is helping them find personal responsibility. I like that. I like that. We'll see uh, when she goes. Um, again, she was scheduled to leave on, uh, on Friday. Rasmussen had some polling out yesterday, and I thought this was fascinating. Um, 52% of voters think that the Biden presidency, and this is the first time I've seen this, is bad for America. And then another 42% of those polled think that a Trump presidency, and how about this? Just think about this would be the right course correction for America in 2024. We've gone from Joe Biden, most votes ever for a candidate in presidential history, 81 million people voted for him in 2020, to now the right course correction, the antidote to our problems, is Donald J. Trump. Um, Pretty unbelievable. That from Rasmussen uh, out yesterday. All right, panel, we have a lot more to get into. We'll see you again top of the hour. Enjoyed it. Mark Halpern, Chris Arps, stand by. Thank you.